Hey, if you notice during the episode, whenever they say delts, that's what they're talking about. They're yeah. talking about walkers. It and, seems uh, like a lot of different groups in this show have different names. Oh, yeah. Oh, abs- all every different group, basically. It was only like the first couple seasons where everybody's just stuck with the same name for them was walkers. Yeah. And then they started meeting these other groups and, you know, people call them skin eaters or whatever, you know. And uh, what did the one guy call them? Oh, who gives the one who was like, uh, Nebraska's nice. Uh, can't remember. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and and lame brains, w- lame what brains. I wanna- That's what he called them, lame brains. Lame <laughs> brains. Ah, magic in the movies. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first official review of episode one of the review? ones who live. Rick's back. That it's a call to review. Yeah, review. Got a makes reviewing. the assumption that we're qualified to review it. I. That's. Uh, that do you is, hold a, a license for this? What makes you? Uh, no, I, I don't go by the name Cisco or Ebert. That's this week on Cisco and Ebert and the movie and the asshole great, great. and that's Roger. I, I'm going to start off by saying, bro, it it was awesome to me. I mean, I've seen like little things, little titles of other videos saying, you know, lackluster, lackluster, my entire butt. It was awesome. It's jump to finish. The people that say it's lackluster don't, they, they need flashes and fireworks and shit constantly. If you don't understand story and where this is picking up and telling us what has gone on the whole time he's been gone. What do you want? You want them to just run in? Okay, they're fighting everybody. It's a crazy mess. It, that makes no sense. What they did was a perfect way to start Rick being back, showing them the the amount of strife that he goes through to just thinking about his family, let alone trying to get back to them. It was it was incredible to me. Incredible. Yeah, I thought they did a good job on catching Rick's emotions during this whole thing, Ugh. like him writing the story on paper. To send mm-hmm. it basically to no one, just to, you know, for his... Just to say the words. Yeah, just basically. to say the words and get it out. He was just writing them. As yeah. far as a first episode, I thought it was fine. I don't want to see just all action and Walker scenes. No. I want to see story. You yes. can have a healthy amount of Walker scenes, different scenarios, because obviously you're living in a world with Walkers everywhere, and now it's even a bigger scale. You're in you're in a city. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, and what city? What city was it? Philadelphia, sir. A L- little close to home, there, bud. A little close to home. A little bit. Just saying. A little bit. Go birds. Go, Go birds. birds. E A G L E S. But um, I thought it caught his emotion. I think the first episode was just fine the way it was. I think where it goes from here is where it could. It, it you know. It could become lackluster if they go into the same old stuff. I don't think they're going to do that. But now that he's found Michonne. No, nah, I don't see that. My question is, now that Michonne has found him, are they going to play this whole angle where Rick lost himself? You know, like he, you know, he got lost. That's a good theory because I was wondering that same thing just because of how he was looking at her. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Because the only reason I say that is I don't think we have enough time for that. This is only set to be six episodes. I don't know if they're going to go for more than that after that. So I'm only expecting to see what they can do and wrap it up in these six, right? Yeah. So that being said with that, I don't think they could go down that avenue because it would take too long to get them back around. I think it's more so going to be, just in my opinion, I could be absolutely wrong, but I think how he ended up getting close to Okafor after what we saw happen to him at the end. We'll get into that. But I think that he may still now want to finish that mission. Because now, he, like right before the end, he said, I'm in. So maybe now he's finally accepted and really does believe and want it to change for the greater good of everybody, including the people back in Alexandria and Hilltop and all them. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, So maybe now is his chance to do that and have her help him. 100% agree. They gave you just enough in that first episode to show his path 
towards eventually being con- like uh, convinced to join yes. Okafer. Yes. Because and the way he wrote the story, how it captures his emotion. The episode had to capture a healthy amount of Rick trying to get back to them. Absolutely. All the desperation being stuck in that room seeing the same thing every single day over Just and over staring and over out again. the window. How he wanted to kill himself, how he cut off his own arm. Yep. The episode had a lot of, all right, Rick did all these things. We're not going to just jump in and Rick's just going to be this different guy and he forgets everything and he's stuck in this army or, or whatever. They had they had to show a, an evolution of Rick. And I thought yes. they did a pretty good job. Fantastic. When he left the show, you know, say five, six years ago, they instantly jumped seven years on the show. That's what they said. Like the first episode when they came back after he had died – it said seven years later, right? So now his daughter, who was like three, is 10. He, in the show here, they gave us the main story of what, how he came around. It was, in the, it was in his fifth year of being away. He had been trying to escape all that time, five years, yep. to where they had him tied up in the beginning. The only one... Is it a total homage to the comics? Anybody who hasn't read the comics understand that yes, Rick did lose his hand in the comics as well. So that that is very canon in what they did, and I'm I'm glad they they did it how they did it rather than some BS way or I don't know. I just I like I, I enjoyed the the difference. Yeah. yeah, and it's like it almost like was you know Rick has been through so much on the show. It's like at this point, you know, you see the torture he's still going through just to get back to the people that he loves cutting his arm off. It's like the total breakdown of Rick, and then you get the total rebuilding of him. He rebuys into this new thing, and it seems like he's just buying into it just to get back to Michonne and his daughter. That's but what in I thought midst, at first. In the midst of all that, when he finds out Okafer killed 4,000 soldiers at Lincoln Financial Field, which included his wife was there just to yeah. save a larger amount of people that triggered Rick to believe in him in some sort of way. There was something I about agree. that event where Rick just kind of went, he was still on the fence. He was still thinking, eh, I still got to do what I got to do. This is my ticket. And he almost gets out Yep. and he was stopped. It seemed like a pretty solid plan too. And he was almost, yeah. he was ready to go, go. <laughs> Don't yeah. wake me up. And all of a sudden, some girl shows up, and then obviously that yeah. character, who Rick is on the inside, he's not going to turn around. Because he could, listen, he could have left the girl there. Hard to be, and remember his old partner saying this. It'll hold you back at every, every turn. And it's crazy how... Rick's character is constantly beholden to certain certain values, but yet, you know, he's still got to achieve a lot of things with, uh, with still keeping his values. And, and that kid showing up, mm-hmm. you know, that, that, that put a, you know, that stopped that plan, but maybe for yeah. the better, obviously. Yeah, yeah, in the long run, you know. I wonder if she ends up coming back around to, to play into anything, that kid. You know what I mean? Because think about it. Like when he found her, that was at the five year mark. Now we're in the present day mark, which I estimate to probably be at least another three or four years. Well, I watched this. I tried to do some research here, and it was saying it's two years more, so it's seven years later. But Possibly, I do not but know then, how but, true that is. But that, but see, if that's the case, that would be right when the show started, and it can't be because Michonne was still around for a good, good another season before she went looking for Rick. So I'm saying, well, maybe could, in the show time, it could be it could be three or four months even. I'm saying a year. It might not be. So it could be only two years. Yeah. You know, because I'm going by seasons. Like, oh, it had to be a year. It doesn't have to be. You know, like if you think about it, I think the first five seasons of The Walking Dead was supposedly only like a year and a half to two years after the outbreak started. Yeah. So, yeah, the time is different here. I do think the scene with uh, Rick and the general. Time you're seeing these two people sit next to each other. God knows what they're going to be doing back and forth to each other. Because obviously this is I where I think he's going to be the antagonist. I do. I think uh, so, the general is. You think he's going to be the bad guy? I'm wondering I if. Do. I'm wondering if this show is going to make it seem like. 
it's also possible. It's but here's the thing. I you know what it kind of reminds me of. Uh, you're not a, a gamer like that. There's a video game called Days Gone. It's a post-apocalyptic world, and you're just a cat on a. You start off as a dude on a motorcycle with a crossbow, kind of like Daryl Dixon almost, right? And uh, he's looking for his wife. <laughs> the entire that's the whole point of the game is right. And when you find her, she's hooked up with a military with this crazy batshit general. And God, does it remind me of similar of this in its own way. Very different, but the same in it, in that aspect. You know what I mean? They've got yeah. this militia that's taking care of these people, hiding away, killing it, destroying everybody else that gets in their way. Or they find out, like if they find another camp, they don't try to get those people to join. They just kill them. What happened in yeah. Omaha? What happened in Omaha? I am sure that that is the CRM that did that. So, yeah. So now you think it's that general? I do. Who, you think it, it came from, directly like, from him? Okafor kind of friggin' said that. He's like, no more A's and B's, no more Omaha's. And Rick looks at him. Yeah. So now here's another question. How much does Rick know that Okafor told him? Not a lot. Was Rick still, you think Rick was still waiting for a lot of information? Because Okafor yes. mentions to him, the further down the line we get, the more I'm going to reveal to you. Correct. And then you you see them training and time going by and Rick buying more into, like you see the time lapse when he's in that office and they're doing things. They don't tell you what he tells them. I don't all think they anything. show you is Rick. All they show you, Rick, all of a sudden is convinced. I'm in. Yeah, that's the point, though. That's and it's what like I'm, okay. That's well, where my point comes in. It becomes involved because right there when he says I'm in, you can see that's the moment where he's going to start getting the secrets from Okafor. And Okafor right there says, "I'm going to let you in on one little secret." Like he's just now beginning to tell him all the goods. Right. Like he may know little trinkets. Now, little trinkets, like he was telling him in the beginning. You know. But I don't believe he knows the grand scheme yet. I think he has an idea of what he, they want to do. And maybe knows he knows the beginning. Or maybe he even knows what the end game is supposed to be. He just didn't know how Okafor was going to go about it. There's, there's multiple aspects to it here. But I don't believe that he knows a lot about it. I'm wondering if he does know a lot. They're going to reveal that a lot through Rick's explanation of everything that's going on to Michonne. I agree, yes. I do believe whatever he, whatever is known on his side, that's how we're going to find out, is when he explains to Michonne what's going on, what he has to still do, why he has to go back, blah, blah, blah. He has because to find out. Because this ain't the out. end of the CRM. It's not like they're just going to meet them two up, and then they're just going to work their way back to Alexandria. That would make no sense at all. They have to have a grander scheme. And it's uh, the other thing that's crazy, how, how so... We're going to let's assume that Rick discovered Michonne because Michonne obviously shoots that rocket that ends up lodging right into Okafer's like body. Dude, dude at first I had no ass. idea. <laughs> I had no idea what he was looking at. I mean, I don't I had no idea what I was looking at. I was like, what? Oh, me either. I just saw a projectile in him. I didn't know it was a freaking like little missile. Yeah. And then like when she shows up, I forgot that she had this gun that could have done that. But when she showed up, I was like, wait, she rocketed. The, the helicopter, and she comes up with a sword, starts taking people out, like, damn. Yeah, badass. But, you know, how does Rick present Michonne to the CRM? I don't know, man. That's actually a good point. Maybe he goes back, but I do believe it's more going to be him just trying to take over again. I think it's going to be... I don't I don't know. I That's a good no, point. See, you I just made my mind go into, like, a whirlwind. I, I just had 50,000 thoughts in a matter of a couple seconds. Yeah, I think he's going to – he's got to – all right, so the question is, is he going to bring Michonne into the fold? Meaning I is don't Michonne so. – because look, the, 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 uh, the storyline here is going to be him against this general. He's not going to fight against his general like raising some outskirt army. You know, True. he's not going to be like – He's going to have know, to turn the people of the CRM. Un, un, right, unless the, the, the main storyline of the show is going to be – Beal, the general, like Rick escapes and the general is chasing Rick down. Yeah, I, I kind of don't want that. I, I don't I, I don't think that's it. I, I think that's somehow, too much like the old shit. You know what I mean? It's too much like the old shit. Oh, we got to survive. Let's get home. Ah. No, see, it's, that's the, the thing. I don't want to. And, and, and perfect segue into the topic about comparing this show to the old show. Um, I want to see episodes where a lot happens in one episode. Why? Because 
if the storyline goes too slow, it's going to start resembling the old show. And I think the first episode was perfect. It did reveal a lot. And without um, being boring, without being too over, too overstimulated with all this shit going on. Like we had these, we had moments of it. You know what I mean? Like when Rick was fighting the walkers in the beginning and they, I like how they call them delts. It's weird. I don't really get why I haven't figured that out. Why, why delts? What I wanted to see and what we got to see in that first episode was a story on a larger scale. And that's, what's going to make it different from the original story. So to me, Rick has to somehow, whether it's from the outside looking in or, or Michonne's got to be brought into the fold somehow. It can't be just definitely Rick leaves and like him and Michonne are on the run because then you're just like, well, you like know, when you were watch the preview for next week's episode, which we all know is going to be Michonne's story, how she got from where she was at the end of when she left to where she is now, the people she met, whoever helped her, blah, blah, blah. We're going to get that whole story. And that episode is going to end basically the same way this one does, except we're going to get it from Michonne's point of view. Yes, I do believe that we're going to have still these characters that she met. Did you notice she was close with like a little group of people? Seemed to be at least. I believe we're going to get them more and more. Like she's probably going to stick with them. There's a chance maybe Rick does keep going back into CRM, playing the game, trying to turn the tide, communicating with her on the outside. I don't know, man. There's so many different ways this could go. But all I can say is I'm very, very excited to see how it goes. Well, that's a good question for the 20 people that are going to watch this video. <laughs> What do so, you our reviews think? don't get a lot of hits. It's okay. You, I'm still gonna do it. Uh, listen from the ground up, sir. How yes, sir. how does Michonne get brought into the fold? That's the biggest question, That's, man. I yeah, it's the, I know. don't think she does get brought into the CRM. Eventually, they're obviously going to find out about her. Something's going to go bad. Blah blah blah. You know it's going to happen. Of course, it has to. There's got to be climactic moments. But I do think it might be. If it's the if it's the way to where Rick is still going back inside, he's going to have her on the outs working together somehow. I, I, I think that might be. I mean, the way I'm looking at it is they built the CRM to be this thing that's way bigger than anything you've ever seen before. The largest military in the known world, right? Mm -hmm. So it seems like they're building this group to only has to be taken down from within. Like meaning Rick has to have a lot of authority, a lot of a power. He needs to be trusted. He needs to be deep in order to make a change. I don't think it's something like he's going to like go find a bunch of like basically like a militia from the city. It's like, oh, well, we outnumber them. If we all come together, we could fight back and all that stuff. I think it's going to be like a strategical backstabbing. It's almost like a Game of Thrones environment, which. I know you're all about. <laughs> it Because it, you don't know when he sits, at, when he looks at Rick. So here, here's how about this? How about the scene between um, the general Beal, Bail, or whatever? I, I you know if I'm saying his name right. I think it's Beal. Them two talking, and he looks at Rick, and he says, "Is Okafer up to anything?" Because he tells him the story about Okafer, but you know, yeah. blowing up the soldiers, and said, "Is Okafer up to anything?" That Rick to lied me, with his eyes. <laughs> that that to me was that like Game of Thrones moment where it, yeah, okay, it put the wheels in motion. Yes. Like it, it put the wheels in motion for like lying and backstabbing a game where Rick. Like you said with, it earlier, it's all going to tie back to that moment. Well, that's the question. How much does that general know? Does he know that Okafer is definitely up to something? No. And he just wants to see if Rick tells the truth. I think, he, well, if he does know, he wanted to see if Rick knew. And he believed Rick because as soon as he looked in his eyes, he said, no, for at the same time, Rick, they basically saying, yeah, I read your face and I knew that's what you were going to say. But why would he ask him then? If he just has a, if he just has a hunch, well, because to, to try to maybe like... get some, get something out of it. Cause maybe when he asked him, he was just trying to get anything out of Rick to see if he like made a flinch or anything, whether, uh, Beal knows or not. He just wanted to see if Rick was involved or had anything to do with it or he was really trying to use Rick to confirm any thought he might have, which put it off, honestly. I think he was measuring Rick. I think there's a measurement there. And I think the measurement re requires the measurement requires some intel. Like the general hat. It, it's not a coincidence that the guy Okafer is pulling Rick aside, doing all this stuff. And then the general just happens to go up to Rick and say, yeah, he's sniffing something. He's smelling something. Yeah. And it's like, you don't even know 
and w- which is probably not. You don't know who's involved in water, who has good or bad intentions, including the general, including Okafer. Okafer nope. could be the villain. The general could be the villain. The, the whole thing is yet to unravel. Mm-hmm. However, there's in order for that moment to mean something, there's got to be a little bit that the general did know. Okay. And he's looking at Rick That's saying, is he, is he up to something? The general's he knows and he's gauging Rick's answer and how the general takes it is going to be up to him. And what yeah. I mean by that is if he knows Okafer is up to something and he sees Rick say no, he's either going to look at Rick one or two ways. He's going to look at him as a trustworthy soldier or he's with Okafer. I don't trust him because he I may also see something. He may also see something in Rick. He might be like Rick's a good. Yes. I think it's more like that. I think in the I think it's the former. I b- truly believe that he was if he was measuring Rick the way you're saying, he was measuring him to the point to see if he was trustworthy. And he did believe him because of the two moments of looking into his eyes. The first time and, and then saying the same word Rick like he he read his face and knew that's what Rick was going to say. And then Rick pulled it back on him again later and he goes, "Are you with us Grimes or is this just another escape attempt?" He's like, "Well, don't you look into my eyes and you tell me." And he just looks at him and he says, "We're just going to sit here for a few minutes and enjoy the scenery." That was cool. That was, that was cool. cool. And I feel like that was, uh, you know, Rick's moment of plausible deniability because he was truly actually buying into staying. And that's when he said, look into my eyes, because finally his eyes actually were saying, I'm going to stay. And Rick was able to look at him confidently at that moment, where any time in the past, he would have not been able to look at him confidently Absolutely to say true. that. Absolutely so, true. I, I literally had the same thought. That's why I like this episode. I like this episode because there's a lot of, storyline aspect there's some backstabbing there's some questions questions are the best part it's not like we could it was interesting and we were there and it's like we we get what's going on but we really don't get what's going on you know what i mean right because they prevent okafer they present okafer like this dark maniacal character who seems like the obvious antagonist the obvious villain because he comes in he's talking all deep he's talking like he has bad intentions you could kind of they make his character dark Mm -hmm. They were trying to play this guy as like somebody who shouldn't be trusted. He's he's just trying to recruit Rick for his own benefit. And then finally it gets revealed a little bit. Yeah. yeah, Until that moment. And then all of a sudden you're realizing in this world, everybody has to become some sort of psycho to survive. And you can't tell the difference between the ones who are and the ones who aren't. Mm -hmm. So now... You know, obviously, and like we already said, does he bring Michonne in? Is he is he gonna, you know, is he gonna say I let that life go? How is Rick finally gonna respond? I have a hard. He's time definitely thinking, not gonna say I let that life go. It's all gonna be like I can't believe this is happening right now. He's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome, dude. Like even I did you watch after the show ended, like the little interview thing they do? I watched the inside the episode. I that's know what I'm that. talking about. Yeah, that. that's what I'm talking about. That interview thing. That's what I'm talking about inside the episode. But when Michonne was well. Yeah, when she was talking about, uh, Denai is her name, uh, when she was talking about the moment they saw each other and looked at each other, they, she made it out to be this love moment, like, they can't, they are so happy to see it. So I do believe it's going to be more along those lines. Yeah, if I, I that is my opinion. It's just, yeah. again, with these shows, you don't know what they're going to do to create a little, little more storyline. Yeah. I, You know, I'm just, so what are they going to do with her? And it's like, I hope... I don't mind the whole episode of just Michonne's story to see how she got there, but I'm really hoping we get a little bit of an advancement of, you know, they see each other at the end of the episode at least. Like they oh, see give each us a other little bit more happens. of it. I need a they little bit, something, dude. Just a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I need I, something. I need, I need, I need something. a little bit. I'm excited to be excited about The Walking Dead again. This These particular characters, seeing Rick come back, not to overshadow anything else, but he's obviously the number one character to the show. Of he's course. been gone for the longest and, and finally coming back. Him and Michonne, they're, they're, they're centerpieces. I do think Negan is another big character. Love obviously, him. Maggie's a big character. Daryl's a big Love character. Him. But, Love him. Um, but the Rick story seems to me to be the biggest and what they could really do the most. I love the aspect of having three cities that are alliances because well, there two you now. go. Two now, right? So you have three cities that have an alliance. One got destroyed. Who destroyed that city? Who's leading who, Who's leading the other cities? There's a lot of room for storyline. There's yeah. a lot of room for 
Spin-offs. You know, backstabbing, <laughs> you know, like plots within plots. Yeah. So they could do a I lot, and I'm excited. I, I, it's, I, it's not going to be the same, no, the same struggle. We've no, seen that struggle. Different. I do want to touch on one more thing before we end this. I yeah. really, really, really enjoyed Rick's dream state. When he was with Michonne, with the pizzas, with all that, that was a cool little aspect that even though when he was changing his mind and everything, she was still there telling him, this is not where you want to be. Yeah. I, I, I love that, and I really, really enjoyed this episode. Well, he, I mean, even Yeah, but you know, he was having those, I love them dreams too, but he was having them dreams when he wasn't bought into that whole... I do know what you mean. Like, he, they were, you know, he did make up his mind that he was staying, but even that... That last little inkling was still there in his head. You know what I mean? Yeah. I felt like that conversation was like the double-edged sword of the dream. And what I mean by that is he's having the dream, but in the dream he's where he wants to be. But in life he's not where he wants to be. So he's looking at her sitting there thinking, I'm really enjoying this moment. But am I where I need to be? Or she says that, are you where you want to be? And, and, mm -hmm. and Well, he actually answers and says, yeah, I think so. He's, he's where he wants to be in the dream, but he's not where he wants to be in real life. So I thought that dichotomy, It was a great, it was a great thing. It was, yeah. I love that I whole use, aspect behind it. I use but, uh, big boy words. <laughs> I use but yeah, big boy words. What did words. you guys think? Did you guys like the episode as much as we did? Because, like I said, I saw some articles out there saying lackluster and all that shit. I think that's for lames that believe that because I personally think this was the perfect reintroduction to Rick. Seeing the struggle he's going through, knowing the character that we love, I'm just happy he's back and I cannot wait for more. Uh, I'm a big boy and I use big words. <laughs>